Care Program on Preparing Your Yard and Garden for Spring. I'm Lisa Flagg and I'm an associate at the Hanover Branch of the Pimunker Regional Library. And our special guest today and our gardening expert is Terry Blair. She's a former owner of Ashwood Gardens and Nursery and thank you so much for being oh, yeah, with us today. Do it. Thank you for asking me. Absolutely. Um, we're just going to have an overview in this program of what we can be doing right now to prepare our yard and our garden areas for spring. Um, so Terry, what would be your best advice? Is there something we should be cutting back now or um, what yeah, should we be there's doing? lots you could be doing now, especially taking advantage of these pretty days. Um, yes. Variety is one of those things that could be cut back pretty hard. If you wait too late, you end up giving a blunt cuts. You know, your mm -hmm. new growth would have blunt ends if you don't go ahead and cut it back now. Um, you can start cutting back roses, cut back your boxwoods, um, get out there if you didn't clean up all your perennial beds, now is a good time to go ahead and remove Work all the that. dead heads and just cut all your perennials. Most of them can be pretty much cut back all the way to the ground. Okay, so what should we not cut back right now? Now you should not cut back azaleas. Um, think about any early spring blooming um, shrubs, you do not want to cut them back because you will cut all your blooms off. I mean, okay. that goes for certain types of hydrangeas, not all hydrangeas, mm -hmm. which we'll visit later, but right. um, uh, I mean, mostly it's just like your little spring, you know, forsythia, don't cut that back now, okay. um, let it go, you know, and then, um, and, and then those, those are the ones that, you know, you want to cut back pretty soon after they bloom. Okay, that's good. That's mm -hmm. a good thing to know. Yeah. And so, speaking of perennials and annuals, what is the difference between those two things? There may be some good things yeah, that we could grow here. Yeah, I think some people get it confused because mm -hmm. they think annuals come back annually, but right. what it means is annuals only come back once a year. And, well, and there are exceptions to that. There are some annuals that mm -hmm. people think they're coming back, but honestly, it's just the seeds they uh, brought coming back. Like, uh -huh. People say, well, my um, impatience always come back. Well, they have re-sown seeds there in that area. Same goes for your zinnias and um, a lot of your annuals that just drop lots of seeds mm -hmm. will come back if you don't disturb the soil too much. Mm -hmm. um, perennials are the ones that you see that, uh, if you go to a garden center, perennials are the higher dollar ones that are in the big, you know, usually in quarts or gallon pots. Okay. Usually your annuals are in little four packs or little, um, four and a half inch pots or things like that. And that's because the perennials will come, you can get more bang for your buck because right. they will come back year after They'll year. They'll come back and a lot, there's a there's a few exceptions, but I would say majority of them after a few years, you need to divide them. That's what I was gonna ask. So they yeah. they typically would spread. Right, I mean, and like I said, there's like um, lavender, you don't divide, mm -hmm. um, still bees, baptisia, there's a couple, there's just a few of them that do not um, divide well. Okay. Is there anything that does especially well in Virginia climate, an annual or a perennial? That yeah, folks there's, you know, we have them? a lot of good choices. The, the, the main thing that gets our plants around here is, um, is the humidity. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, the, the, you know, most plants don't really like humidity because mm. it sets them up for disease. You know, you have oh, the, okay. that's where you get the moisture on the plants at nighttime. That's when you start getting roses, black spot, mm -hmm. um, powdery mildews, which are, um, you see a lot on verbenas and your zinnias mm -hmm. and even your vegetable garden. Um, some of, you know, like tomatoes and stuff will get thing, diseases because of humidity. But um, for the most part, I would say like um, being, you know, if you want something that's going to survive our heat, right? Um, I would I would stick with you know like begonias and vinca and um, there's some some. Um, and I, I would say verbena, but they they have sometimes they have issues. Um, petunias. Mm -hmm. it, a lot of it just depends on our if we have a lot of rain. Right. The things that do well in the heat don't do well. Ver, uh, vinca hates rain. Okay. It rots. Uh huh. So you know, um, but if it's hot and dry, it, it flourishes. So right. you know, there's just it just really depends on what our seasons, what kind is. of year we have. Right. I mean, in one year they're good, and sometimes they're not. Okay. Um, so 
we've covered that now. What about plants that, I know some people have very shady yards or some mm -hmm. people just have full sun. Yeah. Are there certain plants that would do better in those areas? Well, as far as talking about perennials and annuals or? Or really yeah. anything, yeah. Your shrubs, so, trees. So I mean, um, I mean, you know, you kind of have to just do a little bit of homework when you're planting mm -hmm. things and there's, there's you know, at, with, with the internet, and all, and you can pretty much find that about any type of plants. But um, speaking of, we've put some right, sites up yeah, on the board, and, um, and those are some really. I looked at those, and there's some really good sites there. And then you know, a lot of times you just Google the plant to see what it is. Okay. You know, rule of thumb usually evergreens like lots of sun. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a few exceptions for that. Some of your yews and um, hemlocks will do fine in shade. Okay. Hollies want full sun. Um, okay. When I say full sun. Usually you're talking about six to eight hours of direct sun. Oh, wow. Okay. That's full sun. And um, and the, when you look on a plant tag, and some people just don't understand them, I always had to explain at the garden center. So what you see on a plant tag, on perennials, annuals, mm -hmm. trees, or whatever, the first thing you see is their preferred light. So oh. if it says full sun, that's his preference. But then it'll say full sun to part sun. Right. So it will do okay oh, in part sun. I didn't know Or that. it'll say part shade. Mm -hmm. So it will do, and, and the other thing too, you have to keep in mind, morning sun is gentle, mm -hmm. afternoon sun is harsh. harsh. So, um, you know, a plant that says um, part sun, or if it says part shade, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it in full, where it gets like that, uh, afternoon, afternoon heat. Okay. It just they just don't do as well. Right. You know, you're going you're going to constantly or they'll be struggling all the time to right. survive. So you know, kind of just read your read your tags when you're mm -hmm. in the um, you know wherever you go. Most plants have tags on them these days. Right, and I didn't realize that the first mm -hmm. thing was what they yeah. Preferred. That's their preference. Okay. that's their preference. And then the other thing is the you know what it will survive. And then the other thing you always want to look at is the zones too. Okay. So the we're zone seven. I was gonna say, what are we? Seven, and and actually Virginia has seven A, seven B, which would be the beach. Oh, okay. Area that seven B. So a lot of things mm -hmm. do, you know, will winter there where they won't winter here. Right. Um, but we're seven A, um, which means the plants that are um, for seven A means zero degrees. So once you hit zero. They're toast. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and even before that, sometimes, okay. especially these, you know, we push the limits on some plants right. like um, camellias mm -hmm. and, you know, some of these plants that they're really more to 7B okay. as opposed to 7A. But luckily, we haven't had just like I think it was about four years ago when we had those like single digits. Right. Really Lots cold. Of things People lost died. so many plants. Right. So. Well, that makes sense then. Yeah, gardenias are one of those things mm -hmm. that, you know, we kind of, we want them to flourish here, but, you know, a cold winter like that will take them out. Or not maybe always kill them, but you usually have really to cut them, them back. back. Yeah. And it is funny how we can have four seasons in a day mm -hmm. in Virginia. Oh, yeah, so exactly. it really does, I guess, depend yeah. on the year. Yeah, that's what, um, what is, my daughter always calls Virginia. It's very, um, strange personality. Right, right, yeah. All right, we've had some questions folks have asked about container and raised bed gardening. Mm -hmm. Is that something that folks yeah. can easily do? Especially they don't have a lot in, of um, yeah, especially people that are in neighborhoods mm -hmm. and you, you know, you probably need to check with your um, neighborhood guide, yeah, the, the associations to make sure that they approve. And a lot of times it might just be you can put them in your backyard, not your front yard. Right. And, um, you know, so, mm -hmm. and, you know, I can understand that, but, you know, you would think you could plant plants. But, right. <laughs> but anyway, so you do want to, um, you know, think about what you're going to be planting in your beds, these raised beds, because the soils to get them is that they're, it's not cheap, mm. you know, to fill a raised bed with soils, because you got to do the, um, and there's that handout. Yes. That, um. It'll be here. It's um, square foot gardening, and right. you can also Google that, and it'll take you to a lot of this information. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a there's a recipe that you know you put so much um, 
compost, mm. um, perlite, uh, which comes in big bags. And that's like, I think there's like, when we were in operation, like $21 a bag. Wow. And depending on how big your perennial, I mean, um, your bed is, you might mm -hmm. need a couple or two or three of those. You know, it just depends how big it is. But anyway, so, um, and then of course, you know, you can plant things in pots. I've mm -hmm. done, many years I've done, you know, stuff in pots. What does well in a pot? I know people have done tomatoes, I yeah, think, Yeah, you can do it if it's or... deep enough, mm -hmm. you know, if it's big enough, you can, you can plant, um, you know, I use, sometimes I'll do like basil plants in pots. Mm, okay. um, you can do, I mean, you can even do cucumbers in pots oh, wow. and trellis them, you know. Okay. I mean, you know, as long as they're big, mm -hmm. you know, they have to be, I mean, if not, you're constantly watering. Right. So, you know, and when you put um, soil in pots, mm -hmm. you got to kind of, you don't want the soil to be too heavy. Mm -hmm. So don't go out in your yard and dig up oh. soil out of your garden. Okay. It's going to be too heavy. It's not going to drain well. Oh. So you want to light, if you, if you can use some of that, uh -huh. but lighten it up with either like a, a professional potting mix or just add some, um, you know, like some, uh, vermiculite and perlite, you know, okay. some things like that to, you know, make it lighter. Okay. So you just, because if you don't, you're just going to be, it's just going to get really heavy right, and not dry dense. out. Okay. What is the benefit then to a raised bed? Like what, why do people prefer to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like you said, space is one of the okay. things. And, um, and then, you know, depending on, um, like if you're, if you have some physical issues, you mm -hmm. can raise it up to That's true. you know make it easier mm -hmm. to um, you know work Take around. Care. You can do a long linear one. You know you don't want one that's deep because mm -hmm. you don't want to be you know you got to be able to reach inside right. of it. A lot of these um, you know you'll see them um, in certain places where they'll have them raised for the uh, some of the group the, the homes mm -hmm. you know the um, yeah, some adult elderly homes, right. adult yeah, homes. Uh -huh. that you know they'll have them raised so they can reach into them. Um, the other thing is there because the soils heat up so quickly, mm -hmm. you'll get, you're going to get things faster. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I never thought of that. But okay. in that same thing, they dry out quicker. Right. So you have, so to, you water. have to water more often as okay. well. So and the weeding is usually not a big deal mm -hmm. because you know the soils are usually brought in. They're not garden soils out in the ground. And, right. You know, tend to get the weeds in them as much. Okay, that makes know. sense. Yeah. Um, before we talk about some things that we should be starting indoors now, what, as, as far as your yard would go, what's important to do now just for grass? Grass. Um, well, now you could probably be, re you know, reseeding. Uh, reseeding, although spring is not the best time okay. to seed, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you have a nice wet spring and mm -hmm. the grass comes up, but the, the really the best times in the, in the fall. fall. Okay, mm -hmm. so really there's not a whole lot that you need to be doing for your yard uh, I think you can, day. you know, I'm not really, we don't do much of right. that. Right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you can fertilize now, uh -huh. you know, like, okay. you know, just um, look at your fertilizers and for those that, you know, don't want, you know, weeds, you right. can do some sort of weed um, application okay. you know, thing in your garden. So thing. you can do that now. Yeah. Okay. Or so. I don't know about right now. Is you know some of that's all um, time release. Yeah, the uh -huh. the temperature has okay. something to do with some of those things. You know, some of the time release mm -hmm. fertilizers and all are temperature controlled. Okay. But and, and lime, you know, you can lime right. your garden now. I guess. Right. I, honestly, I'm not very. <laughs> I don't really know that much about grass. Right, okay. I was, I was always fair. Charlie. Charlie would be the one I would always right. send them to Charlie. Okay, very good. So what should we be, should we be starting seeds at this point? Yeah. In, indoors, if we're going to do mean, that? I mean, you could have already started some seeds. Oh, okay. But, um, you know, some of your, like, um, early, like, lettuce seeds, okay. um, beet seeds, things like, which also you can direct seed. Mm -hmm. Those type things too. Um, now you probably should be starting um, tomatoes and pe peppers okay. if you haven't already to mm -hmm. get them ready um, for you know later in the spring when it's time to plant those. Um, you know, there's some herb seeds you can plant now mm -hmm. to you know get ready to transplant those. Okay. Um, when you do seeds indoors, the, mm -hmm. the, the key is light. 
Oh, you know, okay. you gotta have lots of light right. for seed drills. You get real stretched, thin leaf um, oh. plants. Uh -huh. You know, and rotate your plants if you don't if you don't have an over you know direct overhead. light overhead, mm -hmm. and you're relying on um, natural light. You definitely want to rotate them, or else they're always going to be stretched. Right, right. They'll mm -hmm. be growing toward the yeah. sun. Okay, okay, that's a good good to know. Yeah. Um, we have some websites on the board here. Could you quickly go over what might people might see when yeah. they check those on out? The, um, the garden know -how .com. That's just a real good, um, you basically can go on there and it's, it, all these are kind of like rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. You get yeah. in them and you know. <laughs> right, you can go all <laughs> over the place. Okay. Yeah, more gardening information than you ever think you need to know. Right. Um, I like the Joy blog. Um, it's, it's an older one. It's, it's not a current one, but like I was telling you, it, the information still is um, applies. Mm -hmm. That one and the Almanac.com both have um, vegetable planting guides, which oh, is really um, good, you know, to know when to plant seeds inside, mm -hmm. when to transplant those seeds outside, and when to direct plant seeds outside. Oh, okay. And you can just look it up for our time, our um, growing zone mm -hmm. seven. Okay. To make sure that you're getting the right information, and then um, the garden gate, garden gate magazine. That one was um, that was a good site for um, dividing perennials. Oh, okay. They had um, so there's certain perennials you want to divide in the spring, and mm -hmm. certain ones you want to divide in the fall, and certain ones, like I said, you don't want to divide at all. So you go into um, that particular website. And once you get there, you go to the menu, and then under the menu, you click on the how to, and under that, there's lots of how to. Oh, and okay. then you click divide, and then that'll take you to the dividing perennials. Great. Yeah. And then the bottom one, demystifying hydrangeas. That's right. one put out by Proven Winners, mm -hmm. which they have bukus of types of. Um, hydrangeas and it'll mm -hmm. explain the different types of hydrangeas right. so that you can understand which ones you can cut back um, all the way mm -hmm. well, not all the way but you know about right. good, good, pretty right. far back right and like the the, the paniculata ones that you can do um, they're the summer hydrangeas that can grow in full they actually need full sun oh wow okay. and then the uh, regular what they call them mop head ones, mm -hmm. those which do better in sun, you know, part sun to shade, I mean, not deep shade, but right. part sun to, um, I mean, they'll do fine in sun, you just mm -hmm. gotta water them. And, and then it'll tell you about all the, you know, different types of those types they have. Okay, and then there's a few great. other ones too that they have. People, I mean, I know folks love hydrangeas mm -hmm. around here, oh, yeah. so, and it is hard to understand when you're supposed to cut yeah. back. And, and then there's also stuff. the fun thing I was, Doing all this, mm -hmm. I learned that you know you all you can you can take a cutting of a hydrangea like in spring, mm -hmm. and um, you can uh, stick it in some soil mm -hmm. and start to another one. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So, so they you, root pretty easily. They root pretty easily, and do that in the spring so that you get it growing. And once when you stick a stick, you know when you um, put a stem in the soil, and then. Um, You'll know when it's got some roots when it's hard to pull it out. Okay. And then you can go ahead and transplant it either into a bigger pot mm -hmm. or because um, sometimes it's easier to just kind of bump it up to, and then um, maybe midsummer put it in put the it ground. Somewhere in the yard. Yeah. Okay. Very mm -hmm. good. We also found out that um, soil testing is available in our area through the Hanover Extension Office at the Taylor Complex. You can go by and pick up a packet and have your soil tested, I think, for $10 through Virginia Tech. So that might be something that folks want to do to see what they actually need, if they right. need lime or yeah. they need, you know, whatever they need. Yeah, they'll soil. tell you what your pH mm -hmm. is, and then they'll probably make recommendations of whether you need to lime or, uh, but it is, it's the low pH, one's alkaline, okay. alkaline is high, mm -hmm. acid is low, which in some things love acids, um, mm -hmm. blueberries love acids. Oh, okay. Soils, azaleas like acid soils. Okay, so um, you might need to add something different mm -hmm. in that direction. I think um, cabbage likes alkaline soils, so you know it just okay. depends on you know 
what you what, what you you're going for. Yeah. Okay. okay. And we also here at the Hanover branch are going to have um, some handouts that Terry has provided us uh, on things that we can do now. There's a March to do list. There's a late winter to do list. Some lawn care. And then we have um, a guide as to what types of vegetables you may want to start indoors and the types of things that you would want to direct plant outdoors. And then there's a section on square foot gardening, container gardening, that sort of thing. So if you want to come by our branch and pick one of these packets up, you're welcome to do that. We are located at 7527 Library Drive in the courthouse complex. So we'll hope to see you there and we also have Lots of books if you're interested in checking out um, on any type of gardening that you would want to do and want to pursue this spring and summer. So thanks for watching and we'll hope to see you soon at one of our library branches. Thank you. Oh yeah, you're welcome.